I've shown the process of vacuum degassing silicon in various of my videos previously, but I thought it might be useful to have one video specifically about it just for reference. Now I think there's often some confusion as to when you would vacuum degas something and when you would pressure cast something. There was certainly when I came to start doing this I was a little bit confused as to when you would use both processes. So generally speaking you vacuum degas silicon when you're making a mould and I'll go into specifically why that is later in the video. Pressure casting is used when you are actually making a cast from a mould though and the idea is that you put the mould and the casting material within it under pressure. What that does is that any bubbles that get trapped in your mould are crushed down to tiny points, eliminating any air bubbles in your cast. For more details about pressure casting please see the other video on my channel. I've made both these videos at the same time so they can kind of go hand in hand together. If you've ever done any mould making it's highly likely that you will have encountered air bubbles at some stage which can potentially ruin the mould that you've spent hours making. Now, silicon mould rubbers that are typically used for mould making are often designed to allow air to escape as the mould dries. Nevertheless I'm sure many of us have had the experience of going down to a mould which has been setting overnight, putting it open only to discover that there's a massive grey air bubble in the middle of your sculpture's face, thus ruining hours of work and often maybe even hundreds of pounds of mould making silicon. So one way to get around this is to degas your silicon. Now the reason this is necessary is that when you mix up your silicon, because it's so viscous, it's quite easy to get air trapped into the mixture. Now I can demonstrate this by just showing you this time lapse of some silicon that I've mixed up. As you can see, there's quite a lot of air escaping, so it's quite surprising as to how much air can actually get trapped in the rubber. Now, so what you might think, I've been making moulds for years and not really had any problems and that's certainly true of me as well, I mean I've been making moulds now for about 20 years and while air bubbles do occasionally crop in, it's never been a huge problem. However, once you start getting a little bit more advanced with this stuff and you start wanting to perhaps sell some sculptures commercially, you do need to sort of up the standard of what you're doing. So for me, I wanted to get myself a pressure chamber and a vacuum chamber to allow me to produce some really decent quality sculptures. So why is this necessary? So if I take this cutaway of a mould here, you can see how many air bubbles there actually are in the rubber. Now again, so what you might think, uh, why is this a problem? They're inside the rubber so it doesn't matter. Well, I'm sure many of us have also had the experience of having a perfectly decent mould. We then come to pour our resin in, and when we crack the mould open, we find that there's an air bubble in the actual cast. So one way to get around that is to actually pressure cast your sculptures. So what that means is when you pour your resin into the mould, you then put the whole thing into a pressure chamber, increase the pressure, and that causes any air bubbles that are in the casting material to be squashed right down so they're no longer visible. However, if there are air bubbles in the mould making material itself, that can also cause the air bubbles in the mould itself to collapse. So if we look at this rather rudimentary diagram here, the green is the casting material and the blue is the mould with some air bubbles in it. As we increase the pressure, the air bubbles in the mould itself collapse and that causes the mould to deform. So this is what that actually looks like in real life. If you can see down the side of the sculpture's face here, there are some sort of pinprick marks sticking out. What's happened here is that I've pressure cast a sculpture where the mould rubber wasn't degassed prior to making the mould. And what's happened is as the pressure's increased, the bubbles in the mould making material have collapsed and that's led to all of these spiky protrusions on the side of the face. So there are a few reasons you might want to vacuum degas your silicon. The first is to stop air bubbles collapsing during pressure casting. It can also be useful for stopping air bubbles getting trapped on the surface of the sculpture when you're making the mould. It's also useful if you're doing things like making puppets from stuff like dragon skin silicon for example where you want a bit of translucency. You don't want air bubbles under the surface of your sculpture. So it's just good for making sure that you don't get air bubbles where you don't want them. So here's my vacuum pump and chamber. So what I'm doing here is putting a pot of mixed silicon into the chamber and I'm turning the extractor on. As you can see the silicon starts bubbling up and what's happening here is all the air is being dragged out of the silicon and that's causing it to foam up a little bit like a Coke can has been shaken up and when you open it it all explodes out. It's sort of analogous to what's happening here. 
what you need to do is to wait until the silicon gets to a certain level. And what you'll see is that it starts getting a bit more energetic and then suddenly collapses back down again. So basically it reaches a sort of a saturation point and then the air is fully extracted and it collapses back down. Now because the silicon increases in size so much it's a good idea to have a much larger container than you actually need for the silicon. That way it won't overflow while it's in the chamber. It's also a good idea to let the air back into the chamber slowly. What I've done a few times is I've had the pot of silicon underneath the air inlet. I've opened the valve completely, the air's rushed back in and blasted my silicon all over the inside of the chamber. So it can get quite messy, so just try to pay attention to that. Once you get to that point, you probably see there's some bubbles on the surface, but um, you're then good to go. So if the mould is actually small enough, what I have a tendency to do is pour the degas silicon over my subject, but then put the mould back in the vacuum chamber and suck the air out again. What that's going to do is going to pull out any air that might have got trapped on the surface of the piece as I pour the mould rubber in. A lot of people have asked where I got the vacuum chamber from and how much it cost. Now I'm not actually sure because this was a birthday present uh, from my fiance, but I think this is the one I've got. Now of course there is a bit of cost involved here, um, this is a UK site and this one's £262. Now that's not cheap but it's not ridiculously expensive either and I really do think that it's worth spending the money because it really does help with your mould making and with the quality of the final results. So that's it from me. I hope this has been useful if you are looking to venture into the world of uh, vacuum degassing and pressure casting and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but for the time being, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.